Good morning, everyone, from Farmingdale Christian Church. It's a beautiful day, and the psalmist says, This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. If we're here today and able to listen, we've got reason to rejoice. Well, this morning is May 31st, Pentecost Sunday, and we have a message from the Scriptures today brought to us by our brother, Gene DeMauro. So we hope you'll enjoy that. You know, the Christian faith is tied to the Jewish faith in a very special way. We don't view ourselves as a new religion, but rather as a fulfillment of the promises God made to the fathers. For the Jewish people this weekend, they're celebrating Shavuot, which means the Feast of Weeks, and it marks the completion of seven weeks from the Passover. The Jewish people on this day celebrate the giving of the law, or the Torah, and they renew an acceptance of God's gift. The Apostle John wrote in John 1.16, The law was given through Moses. Grace and truth were realized through Jesus Christ. Christ means anointed one, which was referring to the Holy Spirit, which came upon him at his baptism in the Jordan River. Pentecost is the outpouring of the Holy Spirit on the body of Christ, so that we too may have the power to live out a life of grace and truth. May the Lord bless you this Pentecost Sunday, fill you afresh with his power and anointing that you may live as witnesses to the grace of God and testify that Jesus Christ is the Anointed One, our Savior. Enjoy the message. Good morning, brothers and sisters. Today is Pentecost Sunday. As Christians, we commemorate the descent of the Holy Spirit upon the apostles and disciples of Jesus Christ while they were in Jerusalem. In line with this today, my message is on the baptism in the Holy Spirit. What is the baptism in the Holy Spirit? What is the baptism for? And lastly, how do we receive it? These questions will be answered by the completion of this message. First, I would like to lay down a foundation of truth regarding the baptism in the Holy Spirit before we go into the actual account. The baptism in the Holy Spirit is a promise. The prophet Joel writes in the midst of a crisis for Israel, his message centered on the severe locust plagues which had wrecked havoc on the nation's crops and livelihood. He made this statement in Joel 2, 28 through 29. But afterwards I will pour out my spirit on all mankind, and your sons and daughters will prophesy, your old men will dream dreams, your young men will see visions, even on the male and female servants I will pour out my spirit in those days. This promise began to be fulfilled on the day of Pentecost when the Holy Spirit was poured out. You know, Jesus is the baptizer in the Holy Spirit. Matthew 3.11 John the Baptist said, As for me, I baptize you with water for repentance, but he, Jesus, who is coming after me, is mightier than I, and I am not fit to remove his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. As a side note, you know, this truth is found in all four Gospels. This shows its importance. The baptism of the Holy Spirit is a command. Acts 1, 4 through 5. Gathering them together, Jesus commanded the apostles not to leave Jerusalem, but to wait for what the Father had promised, which he said you heard of from me. We'll be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. The city of Jerusalem was in a celebratory mode, celebrating the festival of weeks, the first fruits of the wheat harvest. The city would be bustling with many visitors from neighboring areas. It is a gift. Acts 2, 38. Peter said to them, Repent, and each of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. What does the word baptism mean? It is to be completely immersed and covered by. In water baptism, we go under the water and come out of it. We identify with the death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. In the baptism in the Holy Spirit, we are filled from above. Being filled from above is like a waterfall cascading upon you. This reminds me that some years ago, Cheryl and I took a trip with the Glens to Niagara Falls. It was a very hot 
and human day, I, I recall. We went on the Maid of the Mist, the name of the boat that would take us closer to the falls. We put on our plastic raincoats so that we would not get wet. As the boat got closer and closer to the falls, we could feel the refreshing mist of water being poured on us from the falls, negating the effects of the heat and humidity that we were feeling earlier. We had such a wonderful time there together. You know, later I will tell you how I experienced the baptism. There is much disagreement in the body of Christ regarding the baptism in the Holy Spirit. Some Christian denominations believe that they received the Holy Spirit as a one-time event when they were saved. Others believe they receive it on Pentecost Sunday. Let's take a closer look. There are two Sunday events regarding the Holy Spirit, separated by seven weeks. One is Resurrection Sunday, John 20, 19 through 22. Jesus breathed it on them and he received the Holy Spirit. They received new life, resurrection life, to the Holy Spirit, but have not yet received power. In fact, the apostles lacked direction, so they went back to their old occupation, fishing. They went back doing what they did best, becoming fishermen again. This will change later on when they receive the baptism in the Holy Spirit on Pentecost. You could read about this account that's found in John 21, 15 through 25. Remember in John 16, 7 through 14, Jesus said, Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient or for your advantage for me that I go away. If I do not go away, the comfort will not come to you. But if I depart, I will send them to you. And he will convict the world of sin, righteousness, and of judgment. The second event is Pentecost Sunday. When the apostles came together, they were asking Jesus, Lord, at this time are you going to restore the kingdom to Israel? He said to them, it is not for you to know the times or dates, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you will be my witnesses both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and even to the remotest part of the earth. They received power for ministry. Peter, along with the other apostles and followers, were no longer without direction. They were infused with power for ministry. The Greek word for power was dunamis, where we get the word dynamite from. The apostles and the other believers returned to Jerusalem and then gathered together in the upper room for 10 days. They were all in one mind, continually devoting themselves to prayer, along with the women and Mary and the mother of Jesus and his brothers, their total number being 120. They waited for the promise, the receiving of the gift of the Holy Spirit. Acts 2, 1 through 11. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly they came from heaven, a noise like a violent rushing wind, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. And there appeared to them tongues as of fire distributing in themselves and resting on each one of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit was giving them utterance. Now there were Jews living in Jerusalem, devout men from every nation under heaven. And when this sound occurred, the crowd came together and was bewildered, because each one of them was hearing them speak in his, in his own language. They were amazed and astonished, saying, Why? Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And all those that were there from areas near Jerusalem and other parts of the known world were saying, We each hear them speaking in our own language about the mighty deeds of God. From that day forward, things were never the same. 3,000 people repented of the sins and gave their lives to Christ and receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Praise the Lord. At this time, I'd like to give my account of how I received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. I think you will enjoy it. I was having a one-year-old birthday party for my daughter, Diane. I had, I had invited my parents, siblings, and other relatives to the party. I received a call from my church friend, Joe, asking to see me. He was so excited. 
I asked if we can get together another time, since I told him that I was having a party for my daughter. He said, it's okay, I will come and bring something, he insisted. Okay, I said. Joe was a Christian for only three weeks, and I was a Christian for only two weeks. We met at church and became friends. He came with his wife, Andrea, along with a dish of spaghetti and clams. What is so important, I asked. He he said that he was baptized in the Holy Spirit on a retreat. He went to Highland Lake near Port Jervis, New York. He said that a pastor by the name of Murad had finished teaching on the Holy Spirit and asked everyone to come up to the altar to receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Joe said he and his wife, Andrea, both went up to the altar. He said we both received the gift along with this new language. Pastor Muir prayed this prayer over us. If your fathers, being evil, know how to give good gifts to their children, how much more will a Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those that ask? Before you knew it, we both fell to the ground. But we're not hurt. We were both praising God in this new language. How awesome it was, he said. Would you like to receive the Holy Spirit, he asked me. What do I have to do, I asked. He said, you really must desire it. This conversation was going on while my parents, my sister, my brother, were sitting at the picnic table with us, listening in on this conversation. Joe and I, we went into a room in my house, and I asked Joe, what do I do? I asked. He put his hand on my shoulder and said, repeating the same prayer that was said over him. We were both like children, not knowing much, but we were sincere, wanting all that God had for us. I asked the Lord to forgive me of my sins and that I desired to receive all that he had for me, and yes, the gift of the Holy Spirit. As I was praying out loud, Joe's hand began to shake on my shoulder. The room looked like it was turning white. The strange language began to come out of my mouth. I looked at Joe and he looked at me with his hand still shaken. We both continued to praise God in this new language loudly. What joy I felt. When the language stopped, I went outside and everyone was looking at us with weird stares. The first words out of my mouth were, that Jesus loves me, and that he loves all of you. You need to know him, I said. What an experience. No words can fully describe what I had experienced. This happened almost 50 years ago, but I remember every detail. This is the way I received the gift of the Holy Spirit. But your experience may be different than mine. I know someone that received the Holy Spirit as he was praying and cleaning the floor of his church. He said the Holy Spirit just fell upon him. And he began to speak in other tongues. You know, there are three important keys to receiving the Holy Spirit. The first one, are you thirsty? John 7, 37 to 39. On the last and greatest day of the feast, Jesus stood up and said in a loud voice, If any man is thirsty, let him come to me and drink. Whoever believes in me, as the scriptures have said, streams of living water will flow from within him. By this he meant the Spirit, whom those who believe in him will later receive. Up to that time, the Spirit had not been given, since Jesus had not yet been glorified. The second key, ask. Luke 11, 9 through 13. So I say to you, ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and it will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives, and he who seeks finds, and to him who knocks it will be open. Now supposing one of your fathers is asked by his son for a fish, he will not give him a snake instead of a fish? Will he? Or if he is asked for an egg, he will not give him a scorpion? Will he? If you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those that ask? And the third key is receive and speak, Acts 2, 4. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak as the Spirit gave them utterance. Open your mouth and speak. As an example, when I received the gift of the Holy Spirit and spoke in a different tongue, 
I did it. I just opened my, my mouth and I said, okay, Lord. And boom, this language came. And I started praising God in a new tongue. You know, I know there's much to be said about tongues. And uh, that could be another message in itself. So hopefully down the road, I'll be able to give one on what is tongues? Uh, how do we use it? What is it for? But in closing, I spoke about two events regarding the Holy Spirit. But we are continually to ask the Lord to fill us with the Holy Spirit because due to circumstances in life, such as sin, sickness, rejection, discouragement, we may weaken our fate if we allow it to happen. I put gas in my car because if I don't, the car does not run. The car becomes useless because it was made to take us places. If you have not received the gift of the Holy Spirit, remember to ask our Lord and receive. God bless you all on this wonderful Sunday morning. Well, thank you, Gene, for an encouraging message on the right day. Today is Pentecost Sunday. That means we should remember God has the gift of the Holy Spirit for each one of us. If you have any more questions about this, give your care group leaders a call or the pastors a call. We'll be happy to talk with you, answer questions, and pray with you. Continue to seek the Lord because this gift is for each of his children in the body of Christ. May God bless you during the coming week, fill you with his spirit, and be with you. We love you all from Farmingdale Christian Church. Bless your week. Amen.